everybody. Welcome to Weddings Done Right Radio, the how-to for the I do. I am your host, Jody Harris, CEO of Fun of Sight and Sound Events in Las Vegas, Nevada. Well, today's guest, my guest, is an award-winning floral and event designer and owner of Floral Couture by Floral 2000, a major floral uh, setup, design, and event company based right here in good old Las Vegas. I would say the wedding capital of the world. And it still is. Absolutely. It still is. People still come to Las Vegas to get married. Um, my guest's work has been featured on the Knot.com as well as Las Vegas Bride Magazine, Grace Ormond Wedding Style Guide, and the Art of Party Southwest Edition. Wow. She's been featured on ABC and CBS news outlets and offers advice on weddings and event blogs. She event blogs on a regular basis, so she contributes a lot. She believes in always learning and being innovative in design, style, and creativity so as to raise the bar, whether it be for an everyday floral needs or in creating one-of-a-kind weddings and events with a twist. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my guest again right here from Las Vegas. It's Michelle Howard. Thank you. Yes. Did I leave anything out? I think you covered it all. <laughs> wow. You have some amazing credentials that, that, you know, you and I've been friends for a long time. We've been friends for a long time, but I've been in the industry since I was six years old. So yeah. we'll, we'll just say a long time. Wow. Wow. You were telling me before we went on the air, like your experience, you started young. I started young. My mom bought her first flower shop when I was six years old. And it was back then it was just that it was a flower shop. It wasn't flower and event production like we do mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. Although it became that working with her, I worked on the had the opportunity to work on the Academy the Academy Awards. Oh wow! I worked with Paramount Pictures, um, City of Hope in L.A. because we had oh, yeah. we had anywhere from three to five flower shops while I was growing up in Los Angeles. So I've done this for a very long time. I actually I was telling you earlier. Yeah. I went to college to get out of the industry. I didn't want to do this anymore. Right. As much as I loved it, um, I wanted to do something else. And I ended up planning events for housing, for the Greek system, because mm -hmm. I was in the Greek you know, community, um, and for Associated Student Body. And then I got hired by my university when I graduated to plan their inaugural Founders Day. So... I had three months to do it. Right. I got sucked right back into right. the industry. There was no getting out of it for yeah. me. Here I am. <laughs> and here, here you stay. are all these years later and you're here to mm. say, and, and, and quite a resume that you have. I mean, gosh, when I think of high end events, well, I think of any event in Las Vegas. I mean, your name is right at the top of all Thank the you. lists. So I know for our wedding couples, we are going to get them. We're going to educate them. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to give them some great advice for planning their wedding. So, and Michelle's contact information will be at the very end of the show. So if you couples are listening, um, she's, she's a social media fiend like I am. <laughs> so she's all over the place. Um, so Michelle, let's, let's kind of kick things off. It's, we're, we're going to talk about floral and decor because okay. as I mentioned in my intro, obviously it's not no longer bouquets. It's no longer just bouquets. It's it is creating an environment. Okay, mm -hmm. so we we create every aspect of it so that you get the feel, the touch, the the style, the theme. Um, what is the bride going for? What direction is she going for? You asked me earlier about understanding styles. Mm -hmm. um, every bride brings their own style to to an event, to a mm -hmm. wedding, and I say bride, but it's really the couple sure. to, together. Um, you know, and however that comes together. Mm -hmm. They bring what they want, whether it's rock or chic. Um, That's my style. <laughs> I'm like the rock. <laughs> <clears throat> you can go um, country. You can go rustic. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go Victorian. There are so many styles. And people say, well, traditional. Well, what's traditional what? to you? Mm -hmm. um, you really have to play with all the details and what's important to that couple getting married. Mm -hmm. When you look at the couple... Uh, like I said earlier, what defines them? Mm -hmm. And so part of that is me as as a as a designer, really meeting with a couple or even talking to them because I deal with a lot of couples from out of the country or sure. out of state. Sure. So we'll talk to them whether it's you know via email or phone, and we'll figure out what their style is. What defines them? Mm -hmm. Are there tidbits that are really important to them? He's a major league baseball player, mm -hmm. and she loves music. How do we tie those in together and bring that to life for their wedding day? Sometimes those details are really important to them. Sometimes they're like, yeah, that's not so important. Mm -hmm. So really learning who the couple is um, and defining what is important to them, what, to, what elements to bring out on their big day. So my question is, how 
do they know their style? I mean, obviously you're born with a sense of style. Yeah, I get it. But where do they start looking? Like, where do, where do they start? So a lot of couples will bring me their inspirations. And some don't have any inspirations at all because just that they don't know what their style is. Amazingly enough, they really do have a style. They just don't know how to define it mm-hmm. or bring it bring it out. Mm-hmm. Um, so in talking to them, we figure out what those things are. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's by asking them questions like what their color palette is or what's important to them. Um, you know, sometimes they don't have a color palette. Uh, you know, some brides getting married by the water is really important to them, you mm-hmm. know, or a beach or um, or a lake. Something along those lines is super important to them. So we, we kind of talk about what those elements mean to them and why they're important. And we kind of build the foundation for what their style is. Other brides come to me having gone through Pinterest or huge, somewhere right? else on the web. Yes, and Pinterest is a love-hate relationship, let oh, me tell you. you know, all the vendors feel that way um, about it. I mean, I love I, it for me personally. I'm sure you do, but it totally is. It, it really it, it's a, it is a love-hate relationship, sure. and, and we can talk about that. But a lot of brides will come to me with their entire Pinterest board or their int- inspiration photos um, already printed out or emailed to me. And with that, we really can develop what their favorite color pattern is. Mm -hmm. Although they might tell me their colors are blue and silver, I might see a lot of lavenders and periwinkles and purples in what they're showing me. Mm -hmm. And we'll ask, you know, Mm -hmm. are these the styles that we're looking at or is it the color we're looking at? How important is this color to you and Mm -hmm. why? So we'll help them redefine what their palette might be sometimes. And you being an expert, you could probably see a train wreck coming. Like if a bride puts these two really bad, or a couple puts these really two bad cu- uh, colors together, you, like you just said, oh, maybe a periwinkle or a silver or a purple will like kind of bre- break it up. We'll help define where mm-hmm. their color's going. I don't ever want to tell a bride her colors are wrong. Um, or a couple that their colors are wrong because it's, they're never wrong. Right. And they, no vendor should ever no. tell you. At the end of the day, I'm going to tell them how to make their choices come together and work well together. Mm-hmm. That's what it really boils down to. Um, nobody's nobody's ideals or um, inspirations or what's important to them, they're never wrong. Mm-hmm. It's a matter of how we can present them so that they work and mm-hmm. present well at the end of the day. At the end of the day, I'm never going to put my name on something that doesn't look good. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell them how we make it look good, how we put it together, and how we give them their end result mm-hmm. and bring their wedding day to life. Because at the end of the day, that's what we do. We bring their wedding day to life. Absolutely. Great, great, great analogy. So when do they meet you? How, or how soon do they need to hire the florist in the whole wedding chart? Well, we would love them to hire us right off the bat. Sure. Re- realistically. Um, a lot of people will say, well, we need a venue first or we need this first. Having a venue is great. Mm-hmm. And that does definitely help. Yes. Sometimes. But for some clients, they have certain things about a venue that they want. And as a designer, we can help guide them to the right venue for them. Mm -hmm. Um, That really does make a difference. And whether that's hiring us already or at least having come and met with us Mm -hmm. or called me and said, hey, do you have a minute? Because believe it or not, I oftentimes will take a few minutes with brides that I've never met before Mm -hmm. um, and given them some information and help guide them in the right way. Whether they end up hiring me or not, sure, I would love them to. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I want their experience to be, wow, amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, So whether that couple comes to me first or after they've got a venue... It, it's a. It can go either way. I have. Right. I have put together drop dead killer amazing weddings in less than ten days. Oh yeah, you have over you the have. top. You totally wow. have. She. But at the same token, we would love to be hired a year out. We yeah. would love that. Yeah. What the average is? About six months. I was going to say. Um, I was going to guess about it, six. It, months, anymore, it's about months, six, six months. months maybe. Um, we would love it to be a little further out so that we can help them with the actual planning all the way across the board. Mm-hmm. You know, there's an, and there's a lot of other details here. As a designer, when we're helping put together an entire wedding and we're help, we are actually designing the wedding, mm-hmm. um, your best bet is to bring us on board early. The mm-hmm. earlier, the better, because then we can take all of your details, we can talk about budgets, and we can help bring that to life. Most people um, have certain things that are really important to them, and a lot of them will say their floral and their decor which are hand-in-hand, again, Mm -hmm. designer, Um, a lot of people, that's a really important element to them. 
and again, that that is what brings their their entire night to life. Mm-hmm. Um, are all those details, whether it's draping um, a, a particular aisle runner that they want, mm-hmm. um, maybe it's certain centerpieces or a combination of centerpieces mm-hmm. and tablescaping all the way around, because it's no longer just a centerpiece. Mm-hmm. It's your tablescape. What chairs are you doing? Are you doing a cover for your chairs? Are you doing a shivari mm-hmm. chair? Are you doing mm-hmm. a some sort of treatment on the chair? Are you doing a charger plate and a really cool napkin and napkin treatment? And then what are you doing for your menu card? Are you doing a menu card? All of things, these things play together. Are you doing now for your centerpiece? How is that whole centerpiece tying in? Mm-hmm. Are you having 10, t- 10 tables? Are you having 20 tables? And how can we create an ebb and flow mm-hmm. for the entire evening? So all of those details, the sooner they bring us on, the sooner we can help create a budget around that. Oh, absolutely. If that's one of the, their most important details. Oh, that sounds like just hearing mm-hmm. you describe everything that a designer does besides just the flowers. I can't imagine you walking into anybody's event, uh, th- th- t- you know, 10 days or three mm-hmm. months or I can't imagine. Jody, I you have, should be like right there. I have so many people come in to me and when we're sitting and talking, they'll say, oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah. Or, Oh, I didn't know I had to do that too. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, I wow that we have to do that. <clears throat> That's know, why we have the and show, it, and it goes down to <laughs> yeah. all the detail orientation. Yeah. yeah, you know whether it's a flower for mom or do we want something in the ladies' room to remind the ladies, you know, how important so, this evening is, yes. and that we've tied everything in. And no offense, men, you know, those <laughs> details don't generally come become as important to them, but right. the, for the ladies. When they walk into a restroom and see a, a piece that ties right into their entire wedding day, wow, it, it's that icing on the cake. It's the finishing touches. I agree. And those are the things that we remind them of when we're meeting, the finishing touches. Where else can we put those details in place? Mm-hmm. So hear that, couples. <laughs> definitely, you shouldn't wait till the last minute. You no. definitely should get immediately on board. And I loved what you said about... What really clicked with me and and a light bulb went off is when you said you could, because you have all this experience with the different venues around town, if they meet with you early enough, you can make a great venue recommendation because pretty much your, your designer, your floral people have been there. Have We can save them a lot of time based on the details that they're looking for oftentimes. We've worked at all of the venues in town. And when we're dealing with cl- clients that are mm-hmm. out of town, because we do do at destination weddings also, sure. when we're dealing with them, based on where they're at, oftentimes we can make res- re- recommendations for those ones. So well. if there's a couple out there listening who maybe maybe might be working with a designer not as experienced as as yourself, I mean, that designer should also take the time to do a site visit, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you've never, absolutely. I mean, your company, God bless you, you know, you've been around for a long time, you've worked probably every venue and then some, but I'm sure you go into venues like maybe private homes, places that you've never been before. How important is having, making sure that your, your, your um, florist, your event decor people n- it's incredibly important. Do a site inspection. It is incredibly important. The familiarity with a property, mm-hmm. whether it's a facility or, like you said, a private residence, mm-hmm. that is, you have to have that. You cannot plan a wedding or an event without having gone into the property. Mm-hmm. I oftentimes do private homes. Many, many, many times do private homes. We have to not only do a site inspection. Chances are we're back there several times, whether it's taking measurements for yep. certain things, walking a path to make sure, okay, this is the the path that the bride's going to take. How is that going to work? Mm-hmm. We'll work hand-in-hand hand with coordinators so that we're on the same page on things. Um, not every coordinator is a designer and not yes. every designer is a coordinator. So you need to know that you've got the proper fit of your vendors together and that they all work well together. Luckily, I work well with everybody, so we're yeah. good. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. And your and your, your entire team, how important? I mean, it's so, super. We've talked about this with every wedding guest we've had on Weddings Done Right, that we're a team. We're, we you all have work to. together. You, you can't have one person on the team. I tell my staff, and this is my staff feels this way, if another person on a team needs something, you help. Mm-hmm. If you get to a property and linens aren't down because they're handling the linens and they haven't gotten that far sure. yet and you're at a standstill because of it, you drop linens. Mm-hmm. Um, you do whatever you have to do to keep every team on target. At the end of the night, I can't tell you how many times my staff will assist a coordinator oh. in getting her stuff out or um, you know, handling whatever needs to be done to assist on any level, because mm-hmm. we are a team. We make sure 
that every aspect is, you know, working like a well-oiled machine because Mm -hmm. at at the end of the day, that's what we are. If a client has a bad experience with any one of us, it's a bad experience for all of us. Yep. Um, So it relates back to all of us. So as a team... We assist anywhere we need to. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we've been leaving parties and, you know, people are arriving late. You know, if a vendor's arriving late, my team will stop what they're doing and they'll help. Absolutely. You know, because that's important because at the end of the day, like you said, we work well together. But at the end of the day, it's about our couple. It's about those people getting married and making sure that there is no no hitch in there mm-hmm. whatsoever that would de- derail anything. Absolutely. Um, so how do, how would one go about finding a designer, a florist? Um, one of the things I would think would be recommendations from friends. I mean, when we deal with couples getting married, we're usually dealing with people around the same age and they all go to their friends' weddings. So they're all happening. They do. They do. Um, recommendations are probably our number one. From friends, from from other brides? From from other brides, but from family members and, um... Kind of other people they know, whether it's business associates, I can tell you the majority of the clients that come to me will tell me, oh, my God, my best friend used you and -and so-and-so and -and so-and-so and -and so-and-so, and they all told me that we needed to call you. Um, My sister had a a business meeting this morning with somebody, and uh, she came back, and um, it turned out after after the fact, not even having known, that client had called a friend of hers who knew us. (laughs) <laughs> and said, oh, my God, you've got to use them. Yeah. So it's really important. Um, those friend referrals uh-huh. mean a lot because it means they've had some sort of interaction with us mm-hmm. or with their vendor. Um, and it means a lot because they they had a good experience. So yeah. if you're being referred by somebody, it means that they've got a good hard basis for referring you. It's not just, oh, I know somebody who happens mm-hmm. to own. Right. It usually comes with oh, I know somebody who owns and they've done amazing work at X, Y, and Z. And that's really important, whether it's me or any other designer out there. Recommendations are vital. You you need to know that they come with some sort of nice, hardcore, you know... Testimonial. uh, Testimonial that that they've got a reputation. You know, for me, my reputation is everything. Mm -hmm. So it's really important for the, the guest, for the client, to know that they're going to a company that's got a strong reputation. Mm -hmm. What about the venues? How important? Is that really important? Because we all know that there are certain vendors that are not on preferred vendor lists and you get the list and you're like, but my florist isn't on there. So my my photographer isn't on there. Like, okay. So it, it, it goes two ways. It does. It does go two ways. I can tell you um, from my own experience there, we're on a majority of preferred vendor lists. But where we're not a preferred vendor, we're an approved vendor. Mm -hmm. Um, And that goes to the fact of, you know, so-and-so changed venues and now they, you know, they're bringing their florist that they've followed from place to place to place. So that's who's now on their vendor list. Mm -hmm. Um, A vendor list is just that. It's a a list of vendors that a property works with. Um, Again, we're on a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And that's why clients will say, oh, well, I saw you at, you know, 10 properties. Well, sure. okay. But just because your vendor's not on a list does not mean they're not like a, a reputable, mm-hmm. solid, you know, having a solid foundation vendor. You need to research your vendor a little bit, mm-hmm. especially if you're not sure who they are or that, you know, first time you have no friends that have done this before, you're mm-hmm. the first one of your group getting married. Um, then yeah, you want to research who you're, you're working with. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, do they have a solid foundation? Ask questions. Mm-hmm. And you can ask questions to the the vendors, um, the venues even. You can ask them. They're going to tell you if their experience has been bad with oh, a vendor. Sure. Absolutely. Um, or they're going to tell you, you know, I don't have information on that, on right. that client, on that vendor. Um, but what it boils down to is being able to say, um, these are the places I have worked. Feel free to reach out to them. If, you know, and ask your vendor yeah. if you're not sure. Call your vendor and say, "Hey, do you have do you have a referral list of of people I can call of other you know sure. clients that have used you? Do they have testimonials? Do they have a website that has testimonials? Mm-hmm. And are they valid testimonials? Sure. How are their reviews? And we you know we, we reviews are a double sided thing yes. because 
you know, the, there's all sorts of people out there. We but, talk about reviews constantly with every guest we bring on wed, uh, on our show, Weddings Done Right. We talk about the reviews. Yeah, you know, we, we ask for reviews. Sure. sure we all do because, we, you know, most people do look for reviews. Mm -hmm. um, it's about what you're looking for when you look at those reviews mm -hmm. and how um, open-minded are you when you look at reviews. Because every single vendor, I don't care if you are the best vendor in the entire world. I agree. You're going to have a bad experience Everybody, with someone sure, somewhere. You can sure. please all the people all, some of all, the time and some of the people all the time, yeah. but you can't please all the people all the time. Yes. That's going to happen. And I, I you know, I'm, I'm going to say I can usually make sure that everybody is happy in every way, shape, and form, but there are going to be those times. I've got, you know, 18 years with my company here. Sure. Um, if I said I've never had an unhappy client, I'd be lying. Sure. Um, sure. And how you handle that. How you handle it's that It's the client. response back. And also, it's the research on that particular client. Absolutely. Because there are some people that you just can never please. And, and that does and happen. Look at their so, history. so you They're do Yelp. have to look at sure. their history on whether it's a Yelp review or another type of review. Um, I can say the majority of what we do out there, we get amazing, amazing yes, reviews. On the one or two clients that I've had that we've had bad experiences or they've had a bad experience, we have gone out and made sure we've made it right no matter what. And that's very important. It, it does happen. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, same thing. I, I kind of feel the same thing. We, we kind of touched on it with not being on the vendor list, but the same thing with the bridal shows. I mean, just because you don't see your vendor, your florist at a bridal show, does it mean that they're not a good, you know, um, florist? No. It just means that they've just chosen not to. They've chosen for one reason or, reason or another not to be involved in the bridal show. Maybe that's a conflict for them. They sure. have too many other events going on on that day or that weekend. Absolutely. Um, maybe that it's just hasn't proven to bring the, the bulk of their clientele. Mm -hmm. um, maybe their client base overall is a different client base that they're sure. looking for. So there's a lot of reasons why your vendor might not be at a bridal so show. So couples don't freak out if you don't see your vendor mm -hmm. at a bridal show because there are reasons. There are yeah. tons of reasons. And again, we talk about this a lot. Well, I can, our... I can tell you I haven't been at the last couple of major shows here in this town. Right. Um, for reasons of, honestly, we've just been too busy. Yeah. And yeah. putting the effort into a bridal show, which of course is an important element for a lot of brides. Mm -hmm. It's been more important for me to put my main focus on my clients that sure. have booked with me. Absolutely. What are your feelings, or I shouldn't say your feelings, but what about for what advice do we have for couples that might go to an all inclusive place, um, and they tell them that you have to use our floral, you have to use our photographer, you have to use our DJ, you have, you know, wh what are your feelings on that? Should any place dictate you should have to do it? For a lot of couples that are those budget conscience, and usually that's where you find most of that, mm -hmm. um, where they're basically herded into this is the client, this is the vendor you have to use. It's a very hard position because is that vendor going to be able to service your needs, mm -hmm. what you want exactly? Or is it a package, here's your bridal bouquet, here's your group boutonniere, and they're all the same. Every sure. single one is spit out all the same. Kind of like our Vegas chapels. I don't want to Which say is, specifically, but but, but, but that's the, the a chapel wedding is, is a chapel wedding, sure. and you buy a bouquet, and here's your bouquet. So if you're if you're going into an all inclusive place, and you have to use their vendors, um, is that vendor right for you? Sure, and, and that that's a big deal. Um, or is it a position where maybe they? I've I've seen this happen where they'll say, well, this budget is what's allotted for that, so you can go spend this amount at your vendor of your choice. Mm -hmm. And not all places are willing to do that. So mm -hmm. it boils down to, is that right for you? Mm -hmm. Are you okay with a run of the mill? This is We're, we're kind of in and out sure. of, of a location mm -hmm. um, because that's what most of your all-inclusives do do. Yeah. And it's got to be your priority, just mm -hmm. like everything. I mean, I, people will spend more money on maybe an entertain a DJ or more money on maybe spend money on videography mm -hmm. or photography because that's important to them. Right. So again, it comes down to what's really, really important to you. Where do you want to spend that money? Um, another... And I talk to a lot of vendors, and one of the things that they've been telling me a lot is social media has been huge for them. Um, some clients actually find companies based on their social media. Absolutely. And hashtags. Are there certain hashtags that couples looking for floral? Is there anything that pops out in your mind that they should be? Hashtags certain? that I've seen more often than not are like luxury wedding, um, bridal bouquet, mm -hmm. centerpieces, um, 
there are certain hashtags that we use, you know, just sure. for us. But um, really, those are kind of the bigger hashtags. Flowers. Fla- yeah. You know, flowers wedding, in general. Wedding, we- with the if, word wedding, wedding, right? Wedding, yeah, flower, wedding flowers, wedding. wedding bouquet. Got it. Uh, bridal bouquet. Um, some of some of that relates to certain flowers. Let's say they love peonies. Then okay. hashtagging a, pe- you know, peony. Oh, that's good. Um, or, you know, they love hydrangea, the hashtag for hydrangea, or pink roses, or... Purple flowers. Purple flowers. Yeah, purple all wedding of those, flowers. All okay. of those are going to help, um, you know, wedding centerpieces, wedding decor, those types of things will help them in finding those. Awesome. Um, so do you get this? Do people call you up on the phone and go, hey, I'm getting married on June 8th. How much do you charge for flowers? I mean, that's not a, I mean, is there a set cost? I mean, you can't. No, there's not can't. a set. You there's can't not answer a set that cost. question. And we don't generally do packages because we find we want to create every wedding for every individual couple. Um, every couple has their own style. So we want to customize what we do to every client. Given that, we, that's the biggest reason we don't do packages. And we've we've gone back and forth. Do we do a package? Do we do a package? It's really hard to define a package unless we were to just do a small bride and groom package. Mm-hmm. That's easy enough. Mm-hmm. Okay, here's, here's the money you have allotted. This is what it comes with. And these are your three options. At least we're giving them options. Um, generally speaking, I'll get a lot of clients that do just that. They'll either call or they'll email and they'll say, what's the price for? Um, yeah. I, I need a bridal bouquet and a boutonniere and four groomsmen and five br- bridesmaids and 10 centerpieces. Well, that's really open-ended. Yeah, I mean. Um, <laughs> you know, a centerpiece can be a little tiny centerpiece or it can be this ginormous thing on the center of your table. It could be a candelabra, so, Liberace. Uh, yeah. So you, you can go from a $35 little nothing candle centerpiece to a $1,000, you know, centerpiece. So really, I'll get a lot of those, and so I'll have to ask all the questions. Yeah. You know, what's your wedding date? Because that's going to bear an interest in what your flower costs are also. Flowers are a perishable item. They're a market item. Mm -hmm. So are you getting married on Valentine's Day? Guess what? Roses are going to be really expensive. (laughs) Um, You do have to look at what the market is. Are you getting married on Mother's Day weekend? Mm -hmm. You'd be amazed at how many brides and grooms Couples in general will plan their wedding for the second Sunday or the second weekend in May, um, having no realization that the second Sunday in May is Mother's Day. You're going to spend an average of 20% more on your flowers because the flowers cost us more. Sure. It starts down at the growers and the growers, you know, charge more and then the freight companies charge more. And so that cost comes up to us and we do everything we can not to pass that on, but to some degree... We have to pass a little bit of it mm-hmm. on. Absolutely, not as much as the growers charge us, but right. but, but it does it does correlate. Yeah. So, are you getting married around um, the holidays? Are you getting married around Christmas or New Year's? New Year's, the prices go up. Are you mm-hmm. again red roses particular mm-hmm. around New Year's? That price goes up. So you want to know where you're getting married, what the cycle is, what flowers are a little more seasonable. Um, and you don't necessarily, that's not something that's that easy to find, although with the age of technology, it's much easier to find, mm-hmm. um, what items are going to be more in season. Mm-hmm. Spring is always a good season. Right. Pretty much everything's available in spring. Yep. Um, but overall flowers are grown around the world and they're shipped in daily mm-hmm. from all over the world. So people will say, well, what's in season locally? Realistically, Vegas, we live in the desert. Nothing's sure. local. Sure. Um, sure. But Except for cactus. A cactus. You can get cactus, no problem. Um, you'd be amazed at the desert-inspired really? bouquets we've made. Wow. Just saying. Wow. Um, but, but based on that, people will come in and say, well, what can I get? What's going to be in season? Flowers are shipped in from all over the world daily. So mm-hmm. just because, you know, tulips are out of season here doesn't mean they're not coming in from Holland. Um, and the price difference is minuscule on, on things like that. Mm-hmm. It's, the, it's the flowers, like, I'll, I'll give you the biggest one, a peony, which okay. I mentioned earlier, which every bride loves a peony. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they're expensive. Wow. They're gorgeous. They're expensive. They do drop down in price the very limited time of year that they're available domestically. Um, so, and that is a very, very limited time. What time of the year are they? In the spring. But it's, it's, it's a very small window. It's about a one to one and a half month window max. Wow. 
Interesting. Aside from that, we do bring them in from all over the world. And where they used to only be available two times a year, they're almost available all year round now. Almost. Not quite. Right. There are several months where they're still out of season. So any florist out there should be able to give you what you want because, this, like you just said, the stuff is available. It's available now. But again, keeping in mind, it's available. There's a cost associated with it. And right. whatever that cost is, is a big deal. So if you bring a, a florist or a designer, your Pinterest board or okay. your inspiration photos, and it is full of amazing weddings by Preston Bailey and Colin Cowie sure. and David Tutera and Mindy Weiss, and you bring those designers as inspirations, those designers have amazing work, mm -hmm. and they also have amazing taste. Oh, yeah. And there's a cost to that. And there's an amazing price tag. Amazing <laughs> price tag to it. So when you bring a designer... A Preston Bailey piece. Sure. Chances are that centerpiece is somewhere between six hundred dollars and fifteen hundred dollars. Wow. It is not a hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars centerpiece. Mm -hmm. It's not below that guaranteed. So you really want to be realistic. You can also bring those inspirations. Don't you know, don't mm -hmm. feel like you can't bring those oh, inspirations. Sure. That's very important. But be realistic. If that centerpiece in the picture is a thousand dollars, but you only have a hundred dollar budget. Be realistic with your designer mm -hmm. so that they know that you have an understanding of this is $1,000, 10% of $1,000 is what your budget is. So in the world of like, you know, they see this Preston Bailey, for example, that you just mentioned. I mean, in the world of retail, there's the real Louis Vuitton and then there's the knockoff Louis Vuitton. If somebody shows you a Preston Bailey wedding and they really love it, do they come to you and they say, can you do this, but like make it the knockoff version? Is we wouldn't call it a knockoff I version. We would, but, but absolutely, we would do inspired. You know, we would basically reproduce a piece that is similar in overall style and feel, but keeping an understanding that we might have to change flower elements, sure. change the size of it, mm -hmm. um, potentially add some foliage where maybe there was no foliage in that picture. Got it. Or downscale it considerably. So we'll give you inspirations um, and kind of go from there. Right. At the end of the day, for somebody like me, I'm all about budget. But when a bride is planning or a couple is planning their wedding, they have no clue what flowers cost and, and do, decor. But how do they find out? I mean, do they, is there an article somewhere? I mean, obviously I, the show is the, really the good for The show is you. really good for them. <laughs> there is not a book out there that says this is how much everything is because it's not a standardized thing. Right. Because what you tell me as a designer and what you tell the designer next door, you could tell us the same exact things, but what we produce are going to be totally different because of the way we interpret. Sure. So the way I interpret and the way I start a consult or, or meeting with the client and finding out what their inspiration is, I tell them, we're going to go off of your whole inspiration. Mm -hmm. Keeping in mind what your whole inspiration is, mm -hmm. kind of being a little budget conscious, but not overly budget conscious yet, unless they come to me with a budget. I have a $5,000 budget. That's great. Then mm -hmm. I can then I can be realistic with that. Mm -hmm. If they don't have a budget or they don't know what a realistic budget is, then we take their big picture, mm -hmm. their all their hopes and dreams, and we get it all on paper and we put together a proposal for them. Mm -hmm. And whatever that number is, it's five thousand, it's ten thousand, whatever sure. it is. I give them this proposal with all the bells and whistles in it that we discussed, and then I say to them, review this and give me your feedback, understanding that all of this is subjective. Flowers can change, size can change, mm -hmm. backdrops can change. We can do a lot of things to play with numbers. Mm -hmm. I can take a $10,000 proposal down to a $5,000 wedding if I have to. Sure. Understanding you're going to lose 50% of what's in here. Mm -hmm. But we're still going to have the overall essence of what their inspiration was. So you're giving them the big picture, like go big. And, and then from And there... I have to really tell them, please keep in mind, this is big picture. Right. And as long as my client really understands me and that they need to communicate with me, key basis for any relationship, right, right. Um, communicate with me what it is their budget is. Okay, now I know that what I really want is $10,000 and I only have $5,000. Okay, okay, great. Tell me that. Right. So that I can say, okay, so these are the things I'll recommend that we get rid of entirely. Right. These are the things I recommend we downscale. Right. This is instead of this amazing chuppah that's, you know, four-sided and... We're going to make it a one-sided hoopa now, and rather than doing your wedding in the round, we're going to do a one-sided wedding. So there's things that we can do to alter everything we've discussed, but without that feedback, without them telling me right. where they need to be, 
I don't know that. They need not to take your proposal and go, oh my God, she's too expensive. I, Forget and it. And that's what happens sometimes. Yeah. Or they'll take my proposal to another vendor, which they shouldn't. It's it's not right. And a vendor sure. shouldn't accept it, but they do sometimes. Uh-huh. Um, and they'll say, well, can you do this for $5,000? Tell me, I will make it happen. So is it... Does, is it on? Is it the florist or designer that's at fault? Should you not hear back? Like if they don't call you, should you say to them, "Hey, listen, your 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 florist should call you and say, hey, listen, I'm going to give you four days to review my proposal. In four days, I'm going to follow up with you to say, I tell my team, I tell my team, if you haven't heard from your client, reach back out to them after." Three to five days a week. Because it's okay. It's for okay. The, it's, at, it's, it's okay. And it's for okay them. for them to get sticker shock. It okay. happens. Yeah. And I tell you why it happens. Pinterest. Yeah. Pinterest is why our clients get sticker shock. Pinterest is why they go, oh my God, I can't have flowers at my wedding. But back before Pinterest, it would have been Modern Bride Magazine or well, Brides Magazine uh, or Martha Stewart. And Martha Stewart. Martha right. Stewart was hated by Every florist out there when she came out, the covers of her magazine would be taken into, into every single florist and go, I want that. Um, well, that's great. But that is a $600 bouquet. Right. We can create something similar. Right. Your budget's $150. Awesome. Right. I got you, have, you. you. This is a $600 bouquet and you have $150 to spend on your bouquet. It's not going to look like that. You know, it's going to be similar and I inspired could do, by that. Sure, Absolutely. Sure. Inspired. It That's may not the have money those, word. It may not have those peonies. It may have roses that have been hand open instead. Sure. It may have a ranecula. It may, you, it's just a matter of the type of flower that we're going to get to get that inspiration from it. So my question to you is you create a, a couple comes in obviously, or, or, or via email, some, some, you know, people work, um, and they show you their Pinterest board and they show you their likes, their desires. Now, in order to create a proposal, and I don't know anything about the floral business, but do you guys like, do, should florists charge or do they charge? Let me rephrase that. Do floral or event designers charge a fee just to get a proposal? Because I can see from just talking to you and that you put your heart in. I, I can only speak for you, but I mean, you're putting your heart and soul out there and you're investing time. Um, this has been a, actually a, a huge conversation piece between my peers, um, other designers. Uh, there's a few to other designers in town in particular that we get together mm -hmm. fairly regularly, and, and we talk about some of these details. Um, I'm not always liked because of the detail that I do put into my proposals because mm -hmm. it is made other designers have to do the same type of detail. Sure. Um, and it's a double-edged sword. We put a lot of hours into every proposal that goes out, and we have had major debates on do we just do like a flip chart of pictures and this is your price, or do we do what we do, which is very, very detailed. I would say your average proposal takes anywhere from two to four hours yeah. of time after we've met with a client to put together. That's a lot of investment yeah. on our part. So it's really important for us to do that follow-up and hopefully book that client because at the end of the day, are we recouping our money that's going into these things? Because mm -hmm. it is a lot of detail. It's a lot of time commitment. Um, and right now, no, we don't. We've talked about basically giving them just a shell of the proposal and saying, you know, once you retain us, mm -hmm. um, we'll give you the full proposal. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't been able to put that into words yet. So I haven't been do able the, to do that. Would the, like, I, 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 mm -hmm. and again, I can't speak for wedding planners either, but that wouldn't that be the same thing for like wedding planners? It, it, yes. Somebody wants to hire, for example, our friend Mindy Weiss to mm -hmm. do their wedding. Mindy Weiss assume, gets a retainer. Yeah, I would assume before they do anything that they get a retainer. Mindy Weiss, Preston Bailey, Colin Cowie, David Tutera. A client walks in and books them before they've given them anything. Sure, sure. And realistically, as a floral and event designer, um, from the decor aspect of it, we really should get to that point where we're booked before we Yeah, because I can see a couple, I could totally see a couple coming in and interviewing you mm -hmm. and sitting down and maybe spending about 45 minutes mm -hmm. with you to kind of just discuss their dreams and stuff like that and <sighs> find out that you really care. Like, I think that, that that's the main thing in, in, in all of this is finding a vendor who cares about you. It's, it is finding a vendor who cares about you 
it's finding the vendor who gets you, who you click with, okay. who you understand. Um, and I'll say this, and, and a lot of vendors will disagree with me. After you've figured out whether you're doing a plan or not, after you've figured out your vendor, you've got three really important elements to your event that are super important. Mm -hmm. um, not saying that sure. other vendors are not important, no. but your florist and decor person mm -hmm. brings your event day, your wedding day to life. They're the ones who make this big picture look the way it looks. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who bring life to it. Mm -hmm. Your photographer is the one who captures it for them. Absolutely. Um, and that's the very, very important detail. And then your DJ or your MC, mm -hmm. they're the ones who make your night happen. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who make the night progress. So in my opinion, not discounting any other sure. vendor, you have got to click with those three vendors. I agree. Those three vendors have got to understand you. They've got to understand the, the core of you and your you know, the couple sure. so that they are capturing and giving to the client exactly what they're expecting mm -hmm. from their event. No, um, and, and I'll sit and I'll tell my clients that all day long. I hope they book me, but they need to know that I've got their best interest and that we click and I understand what their needs are. Okay. Um, so that's super important. When a client comes in, I have no problem telling them that. Not that I want to send them down the street to sure, another vendor, sure. but they need to know that I, I care about them. Once they book me, and I tell this to all my clients, mm -hmm. once they book me, they don't ever have to stress over their decor and mm -hmm. their flowers. Mm -hmm. I do that for them. <laughs> um, <laughs> we, 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 we do. We do. As, as vendors, we so do. We all, we, we all. One, as, as a reputable, really caring vendor, we we want to sure. make sure that our clients are not stressing over any details. We don't want them like freaking out, calling us like, oh, my God, where are they? I can't reach them. Oh, my God. You know, like I've had a client call me. Uh, true story. Client call me and say, I know that everything's, you know, in stone and nothing's mm -hmm. really in stone with me. Not until well, we get be, further down no, the line. Absolutely. Until that and, day and, you deliver. Yeah. And, I mean. and, but I just found a cover of a magazine I really, really love for my bridal bouquet. I said, okay, send it to me. Mm -hmm. Or tell me what magazine is. I'll go buy it. Right. Um, you know, no problem. If we need to shift things, we shift things. Because a bride and groom or couple's style, it evolves. Mm -hmm. If they got engaged last year... Their whole style will evolve during the during the planning course. Oh, absolutely. So although we want to make sure that we're designing as we go, things might change. They might see that cover of a magazine. They might see something that inspires them, a picture. They might have been on a hike together and they go, oh, my God, we're, mm -hmm. we're now we're going to do hiking and we want wildflowers instead of all red roses. Well, it's happened. <laughs> Yeah, well, pop culture. Uh -huh. I mean, pop culture dicta dictates everything. I mean, a famous person could get married. A Kardashian or Taylor Swift could decide to get married mm. or Miley Cyrus. It and people makes it, look, it to makes those, a huge look up difference. to those people and go, oh, my gosh, you know, I want a wedding just like a, Miley's. A, or a flower might come back into being in style mm -hmm. because a designer brought it back in. Um, those things happen. Is it important um, to to ask your floral designer how many weddings they're going to be doing on the day you get married? Is that so? About ten years ago, that was a question that was featured in one of the magazines. Mm -hmm. I don't remember which one, but every single bride that came in was asking that question all of a sudden. And I finally started asking, "Okay, where did you find this question?" Sure. Um, it's a it's a yes and no question. And the reason I say that is because you want to know what your designer or florist is capable of. Are they a small florist that can only handle one wedding? Mm -hmm. Are they a major event production company mm -hmm. that can handle multiple? Um, I'm a major event production company. Mm -hmm. So what I can handle in a day versus a small flower shop down the street um, are two different things. I bring in big crews. I deal with a lot of people who I've dealt with over the years. Um, I have a big staff. Yeah, you know, I you do. I have access to a staff of 30 individuals. Right. Whereas a small, you know, I'll, I'll say mom and pop shop, and that's really almost not fair to say anymore, um, they might only be able to handle one or two Well, like weddings. the florist shop that you might see in your little town on Main Street, USA, with the flowers in well, the front. And, and the, the other thing you need to take into consideration, how big are those weddings? Are the weddings, you know... A, a very small gathering for 50, mm -hmm. or are they a large wedding for a thousand? Mm -hmm. I will tell you, honest to God, my biggest wedding weekend, 
I had two major, major, major weddings. One was a four-day event and one was another two-day event. Mm -hmm. On top of that, I had 11 other weddings that weekend. Now, that was a four-day weekend. Mm -hmm. But my logistics sheets were 11 pages long. Mm -hmm. And it was down to the minute on everything so that my team was where they needed to be when they needed to be there. So can a company handle more than one wedding? Absolutely. Right. What is that company's capabilities? Mm -hmm. And that's really what you need to understand what their capabilities are. And what is that owner or the company going to do to ensure that your wedding goes off without a hitch. I would imagine that large companies, just like multi, we call them multi-ops in the DJ world, Might you might assign a particular staff member mm-hmm. to that particular bride and groom. Yes. Right? That's yeah. The- and, and basically what we do is we look at the, the, you know, four weddings we have for the weekend and we say, okay, which designer is best suited to handle this property, mm-hmm. this style, this client, this structure that we're building, which of my designers and which of my design team Mm -hmm. um, that supports them is best suited for that need. And, you know, we do that in our logistics meetings. We have logistics meetings every week. And we sit down and we decide who's handling what events. Now, all of my designers have their hands in every event to some degree Mm -hmm. because we want to make sure that there's a very well-rounded look that everything is, is kind of meeting the mark. Um, and then again, you know, if, if we have, you know, a rocker wedding, we have a designer that's maybe a little more suited for that. Mm-hmm. So we make sure that those kind of fit. Mm-hmm. Um, talk to me a little bit about the contract. Obviously, everything needs to be put in writing. Everything should be put in writing. Okay. You don't want anything not put in writing. Um, there are a couple of things that'll happen like the day before that, a, you know, a bride will call me and say, I need another corsage for mom or grandma. Um, you know, are you going to get that in writing the night before? Probably not. Are we going to make sure it's there? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's that, that's that trust you build with your vendor as mm-hmm. well. But everything should be in writing. You should know what your fees are. You should know what you're paying for. Mm-hmm. You should know, um, you know, a- any odds and ends that aren't included or are included or what's extra. Are you going to get hit with a bill afterwards for something? My contracts are all inclusive. The only time there's any extra charges, and it is written out in there Mm -hmm. so that they understand it, if they extend their wedding and we have to come back because we're back at the end of the night to pull rental rental items or whatever else, and we weren't informed with enough time, which is more more often than not what happens with the we leave cell numbers to call us, Um, as long as we have a three-hour notice... We'll push our staff back. If we don't have that three-hour notice, we can't push our staff back, and you're charged for their time. Right, because there's um, labor. I don't there's think people labor. understand. You and I had a conversation a month ago, two months ago now at lunch, where we talked about the labor, the labor costs. The people, labor I don't cost, think they understand that. Labor what, cost what? is through the roof for, for a floral and decor company. What a lot of clients don't realize is all the preparation that goes into their floral and their decor prior to their wedding day. Their flowers are arriving anywhere from three to seven days before their wedding. And I say seven days and people go, oh, my God. So there are some flowers that require that much time to bloom out, mm-hmm. to process out to the point that we want them for the day of their wedding. Um, <clears throat> so that lily, for example, that she wants in her centerpieces, mm-hmm. um, that lily, if it comes in too tight, we have to have that week for it to process, just wow. to open. Wow. And we may be babysitting those lilies every day, making sure they're opening properly, pulling out the pollen from them so they don't stain anything. Mm-hmm. Those are all things wow. that we're doing Forgot way before that. their wedding day. Sure. Um, we are prepping containers. We are pulling things out of storage. So, you know, things have to get prepped to be put into storage. They have to be prepped to come out of storage. They come out of storage. They need to be cleaned. Mm-hmm. If there's glassware that has pebbles in the bottom of them, those pebbles need to be put in the bottom Amazing. of them. We can't do that and leave them there because those pebbles might be, you know, pebbles this time and gems next time. Mm-hmm. Um, so everything when it comes back from an event there's labor involved, and before an event, there's massive labor involved. Everything has to be staged. When you have some of those big, big weddings, everything is staged and prepped and being you know, created in advance. Um, your flowers are not being made the day of your wedding. Do They're- you estimate, like, lab- do you, do, I mean, having done this as long as you have... I mean, uh, should your for your designer, your florist, do they do they have like an estimate? Do they estimate? They, like, how do you put that into a proposal? How do so you know? So there's some labor costs that are fixed right into your flower 
charges. Mm -hmm. So your centerpieces, there is a labor expense that has been figured into that. Okay. Um, whether you're renting a, a vessel um, or not, the, the rental fee really isn't, you're not really paying for the, the vessel, you're paying for the labor that's involved in getting the, the vessel out, the storage of the vessel, cleaning the vessel, putting the vessel back away after the event. We've already paid for the vessel. Now we've got the labor that's associated sure. with making sure that vessel works for you. Um, the other fees that, that come into play are the actual setup and strike of your event. Mm -hmm. So that la that is a line item on my contracts. Mm -hmm. There's some con there's some people that you know incorporated it all into the cost mm -hmm. of their flowers. Mm -hmm. We actually have a line item for your labor. The average larger wedding that line item is anywhere from fifteen to twenty percent of their overall cost. Um, the bigger weddings are twenty percent because there's that much labor that goes into them. Mm -hmm. In some markets, travel. Yes. So in, obviously, in, like if you live in Indianapolis or LA, we have a couple. If we have couples listening to us in LA, I'm sure the, right, there's the yeah, companies there's, have to. There are travel expenses associated as well. So there are several weddings and events that we've done out of state, and there's travel expenses that are, that go along with that. And they book us because they they they're comfortable with us. They know we know what they we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, they know that we know them and their style. They like what they get. So there's travel expenses to that, and and that is all laid out or should be all laid out into your contract as well. Contracts are a really important thing, and probably the biggest thing that I've found is clients don't read their contracts. Mm -hmm. They don't always even read their descriptions because yes. my contracts are very detailed. Sure. Um, we detail out your centerpiece, your bouquet. your It's all in there. Mm -hmm. So if you have a question, look at your contract. At least from me, sure. and not again. Not all. Not all vendors are like that. Um, but you should have a con you should, should have a contract. Every, shouldn't anybody you hire? I mean, couples listening. Everybody you hire should well, give you some sort of contract. Well, and the thing is, that contract's for the protection of the vendor, but it's also their protection. You want to make sure you have a contract because that's your protection. Yeah, that is your way of saying I hired you. I gave you money. Right. Where's my product? Where's right. my service? That's right. really important. They want to make sure they're protecting themselves. Yeah. How many times have we, meaning us in the wedding mm -hmm. industry, gotten that frantic call the week before someone's wedding because they can't find their their florist whoever, or their photographer, photographer, photographer or yeah. or you know anything along the lines? I've okay. heard I've heard a story about a, a bride who did, couldn't find her own coordinator. I'm like, what kind of coordinator did you hire that it's the week? before your wedding and you're trying to find them. I, it, and that's not the way it should be. <laughs> yeah. and, and your vendor should be accessible to you. Not saying they're accessible to you at 10 o'clock at night, although believe it or Are not. Are you Dr. Michelle Howard? <laughs> MD. Um, we can't you, get you'd a be doctor. amazed. You know you'd be amazed. Um, we do get those calls we do. late at night. We, we, do. we get the emails. We, we get... Do. I'll get the clients that email me in the middle of the night and they yeah. get a response right away from me and they respond back going, what are you doing awake? Yeah, I get that And I too. say, well, what are you doing emailing me? Yeah, exactly. or, or they'll call my office at 10 o'clock at night and I answer the phone and yeah. they're like, what are you doing there? Well, why are you calling? Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? If, I didn't if, think I'd get you. If I'm here, I'm answering the phone. If I'm here and I'm, I'm at my computer and I see your email pop up, I'm going to reply to it. Sure. I've, in fact, most of my clients that reply to me late at night, they're the ones who get response <laughs> right, right away, away. <laughs> because oh. I'm in front of my computer. Oh, my gosh. Um, not as much anymore. I mean, no. I, I still I respond to all my emails, but um, I used to be in front of my computer a whole lot more in the middle of the night. Oh, than I am now. I hear you. I, I, I'm, I'm always, now with the phones and yeah, everything. Yeah, with the phones, I mean, it's it's yeah. always. Even when I have an away message on, my my staff gets mad at me because I'll still answer some of them. And they're, they'll call me and they'll yell at me. They're going, you have an away message on. Why are you answering Why are you, this? exactly. She's passionate. That's what you want, <laughs> a vendor who's passionate. Um, I can talk to you so much. There's so much, so much stuff, but we're getting limited on time. So You'll I'm have ask to have you, me back. <laughs> I will have you back. Trends. What what are you seeing in uh, in in wedding design, floral? What did real quickly? What are okay, some of the trends? So so many trends out there, and we'll bring um, you back for trends. You, we're gonna have like, to come back and talk about trends. Gold, gold is back. Gold. gold is a big color that was gone for seven years. It was at, out. Um, gold is really coming back in, and it's coming back in strong and huh? and fierce. Okay, um, you're starting to go back into more of your bolder colors again, okay. um, where we were really into those blushes. Um, they're still there. They're not going anywhere. Your, your really soft color palettes are not going anywhere. They're still going to be around. 
but you're getting a lot of people that are going a little more bold with their mm -hmm. color choices. Um, and then you're going into the gray colors, the grays, the yellows. Um, those are working really well together. Uh, and then again, earthy, the, the eco-friendly, um, earth conscious. Mm -hmm. Those have been really big with a lot of our clients. Kind of like hippie? Um, hippie, yes, but more just eco. And so when I say okay. eco, probably a little more contemporary than hippie. Okay. Um, the hippie comes back into play with the floral crowns. Big trend. Huge, huge oh, trend. Yeah. You saw the one I brought in earlier. Yes, um, yes. Floral crowns are huge, whether it's just for a photo shoot or for their weddings. They're wearing these big, beautiful, heavy floral yep. crowns, and they're gorgeous. Like Brie, Be like Brie Bella. Brie Bella and mm -hmm. Daniel Bryan right. from WWE. So Sorry. there you she go. Knows who I know who you're she talking about. She watches Total Divas. <laughs> I just know what she does. I really don't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, anything else about trends? Anything else? I, should... I think those are some of the bigger trends that you'll see. Okay. I'll come. I'll come back. We'll talk about trends. All right. And your big takeaway. If you had to give uh, a couple. One big takeaway from all of this that we talked about today, what would you what would you say? Always know that your style is your own style. There is not some don't worry about what somebody did before you. We were talking earlier. Mm -hmm. um, your wedding is about you, the couple. Um, defining who you are. When your guests walk into your wedding or your reception, are they going to know it speaks you? Mm -hmm. And when they walk in, are they going to know that this is Bobby and Sue's wedding? Um, wow, that's so them. You don't want to worry about what somebody did before. You don't want to know, well, what does everybody else do? Mm -hmm. What do you want to do? What do you want to create that, that speaks you? Whether that's showing up in a, in a plum dress because you don't want a white dress mm -hmm. or having a centerpiece that's unconventional. There, be, be okay with being you. It doesn't okay. matter what somebody's done before you. It's, it's all about you. Great advice. And how can one find you on social media? Is there one outlet where they should go so to? You're all over. We're so. all over. We're all over. So our website is, is floracouture.com, mm -hmm. and that's F-L-O-R-A, couture, C-O-U-T-U-R-E.com. Um, you can find us at Flora Couture by Floral 2000 on Instagram. Uh, we're on Twitter at Flora Couture. Um, and we're also on Facebook at Flora Couture. And you have a great website, too. Yes. So they can yeah. definitely and our website will have a, an upgrade coming up really soon. So awesome. we're excited about that. Much better event page than we have right now. Oh, my gosh. So much information. She's coming back. We're going to bring her back because she's got Looking so much. Looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys enjoyed this very fantastic episode of Weddings Done Right How To for the I Do because we want to we talked a lot about floral and what you need to do, and what you need to know, what you need to ask. I am Jody Harris. If you guys want to follow me on Twitter, I am Jody Harris on Twitter. I am also on Instagram as well. And uh, I am um, just happy to be here and give you guys some great advice so you can help us out review the show please please tell your friends review the show leave us some messages tell us how much you like it and uh, you guys make it fun tastic we'll see you next time thanks <laughs>